I'm Shannon Holland, former intern at the Church of the Larger Fellowship and now Navy chaplain serving in the Coast Guard. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I'm, I'm half of the Navy chaplains, the, the UU Navy chaplains. Sometimes the most practical and everyday things take on an important spiritual symbolism, and they become a kind of touchstone that we can reach back to for guidance. Before ministry in the Navy, I was a Marine. And in the late 90s, I was part of an expeditionary unit aboard an amphibious aircraft carrier off the coast of what was then Zaire. And we'd been at sea for weeks. We had this very practical need to be resupplied. But the ship could not leave its assigned station. We still had to get up every morning and go to work every day. So what we requested was an underway replenishment. This happens all the time in the Navy, but I had never seen an underway replenishment. An UNREP, as it's called, is two ships, each one about as long as a medium-sized skyscraper is tall. And they're steaming very close beside each other, barely 150 feet away. They're going 15 miles an hour. And they've got cables, the resupply cables are suspended between them over this big canyon of water. And if either of these two moving cities makes a course deviation of just one degree for one minute, that can be enough to set up an unavoidable collision. You have to be careful when you come alongside someone. We'd been at sea for over 40 days. And I can tell you the refrigerator gets cleaned out pretty fast when you're feeding 3,000 people. I know we didn't actually eat frozen fish triangles for three weeks straight, but in my memory, that's the clearest food that I recall. So we were ready. Nothing gets you excited about vegetables like being at sea for several weeks at a time. So I wanted to go outside and see the action myself. And that little tiny dot way out there on the horizon was the supply ship. So at first it's pretty slow action. But ever so slowly, it grew larger, it got closer and closer. And as it got closer, our anticipation grew and grew. We didn't really care what they brought, as long as it was something new and different than what we had been experiencing. And then it got real disappointing. The supply ship stopped getting bigger. Sometimes coming alongside someone involves uncertainty. Both ships just stabilized there about a quarter of a mile between them. They're going exactly the same speed and they held that position of no relative motion for about 15 minutes. And for those like me who had never seen this before, anxiety began to creep in. Was our resupply gonna be canceled? Was our support just going to drift away? Why weren't they getting closer? We wanted groceries. And finally, they began to steam forward. And what I did not know then was that that delay at a quarter of a mile was intentional. After I had searched through the procedures for underway replenishment, I discovered that this position of zero relative motion has a name. It was the waiting station. You see, there were human beings involved in this process. And before we could come alongside each other, we had to build trust. That's exactly what that 15 minutes was for. All the procedures and preparation were already complete. There was nothing left to do on either deck. But we needed this deliberate moment 
to find our trust in each other. If we'd have had a UU chaplain on board at the time, it would have been a good time to sing. When I breathe in, I breathe in trust. <laughs> but we didn't have a UU chaplain, and we didn't sing. So us onlookers began to get impatient. But then it got exciting. The supply ship started to get bigger again, and when they were finally alongside one another, the supply ship blared over the loudspeaker. Ahoy, mighty warship Nassau. This is the USS Detroit requesting to come alongside for underway replenishment. And the Nassau blared back, good morning, Detroit. We're glad to see you. Proceed to come alongside. And then it got really exciting. I'd never seen this before. There's someone on the supply ship holding what looks like a loaded, uh, looks like a rifle with a baseball on the end of it. And the baseball has a long tether. It's attached to the supply ship, all flaked out neatly beside the man with the rifle. And as he angled that rifle up to our crew, our ship's crew looked like the fans on the center field bleachers of a pennant game. They were all standing out there with their baseball gloves out on the catwalks waiting to catch that game-winning home run ball. Then there was a loud crack, and that ball came sailing across the water with that skinny little rope attached to it. And a cheer went up when that, that one sailor caught that ball and his glove with the long cord attached to it. And the cheer had barely died down before the deck crew tied that thin messenger line to a thicker rope and then dragged it back across to the supply ship. The Detroit crew pulled the rope back and they connected the, the rope to a larger cable and now our crew on the Nassau hauled and finally we had that cable suspended between the two ships. I watched them carefully pull two more cables, then a phone line, and finally two hoses. Coming alongside to replenish someone takes patience. It's not a quick fix deal. If we're going to genuinely reach out to each other, it takes time. And we have to do some hailing and a lot of listening and paying attention. There was one cable there holding the hose for ship fuel, another cable holding the hose for helicopter fuel, and the third cable had a big pulley on it and they were dragging warehouse pallets across in cargo nets. This was our fresh fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Be careful with that, right? That night, we broke bread together, fresh bread. And we celebrated with crisp, crunchy salad and sweet berries. And that's how an unrep is done. Whoever you are, wherever you have come from, whatever is on your heart and mind that brings you here to this moment, in body or in spirit, welcome. We're glad you are here. Whoever you are, wherever you have come from, whatever is on your heart and mind that brings you here and now, whether it is to heal someone who is sick, to feed someone who is hungry, to visit someone who is in prison, or to let your heart be changed by the stories of war, whether it is to ready yourself for the next challenge in life, or to navigate the path of grief, or to celebrate together an important life passage. May the spirit of life steady you with grace and courage. May this be our way as we reach out in love. Blessed be.